what you're viewing is an eight digit seven segment LED display driven by the Mac 7219 display driver. It has two modes basically dot matrix and binary coded decimal. One, two, three. All right, here again is a view of my test setup. This board over here uh, has various sensors that I've been testing. This is my breakout board with two switches and an Arduino Nano. And this is connected to a Max 7219 being used to drive an eight digit seven segment LED display. Here I'm going to give you some ideas how to program the Max 7219. Here is a closer view of the display strip. <coughs> Excuse me. You can get these off of eBay for between two and three dollars if you want to buy ten of them. Our brothers in China. Hey, what can I say? Um, very simple to connect. It actually has three connections plus ground and power. You may have to solder these little terminals onto the board. That's and the Max 7219 is underneath. Note something that the individual decimal points on these digital displays are to the right of the digit. You'll have to know that later on. You can take these, or you can take the data out of one device, connect to the data in of the following device, and parallel the load and the clock and you could have as many you could have an infinite number of either digital displays or in this case when you're using it in your dot matrix mode you can tie one into the other like this i am interested here only in the led display mode which is binary coded decimal let me walk you through the important points of the max 7219 data sheet on the left is, is your chip outline. It's either a dip or a surface mount device, 24 pin. On the right is your functional diagram. The only connections you're going to see is DN, load, and clock. All of the rest of this is built for you on those modules that I showed you earlier. Here is a more comprehensive view of the internal block diagram to the max 7219. It consists really of a 16-bit shift register. It has a 4-bit address decoder. It has an 8x8S RAM setup. And it has a variety of registers. Eight registers are tied into the displays themselves. Then you have control registers such as a shutdown mode register. You can set the intensity in software. You can set the number of digits to actually operate. You can test and so forth. How this works. Load is set either to high to latch or low to shift in. I'm going to set CS low. I'm going to place a bit either high or low on DN. Then I'm going to take a clock and I'm going to go from low to high back to low. Whatever is on D is shifted into D0. And if you do this in a loop 16 times, you will clock in all 16 bits. That's zero, D0 through D15. Now D12 through D15 are not used. As I said earlier, you have the D out that can be t uh, um, connected to another module, and you could shift in 32 bits if you need two of these in series, and so forth. So remember this, I clock in, and what I do instead of a 16-bit shift register, I use two 8-bit shift register routines that I wrote. The first byte or so will be the 4-bit address for the associated register, 
and the second byte will be the actual data that will be written to either the registers or the SRAM. All right, now that I have written my address and data into the 16-bit shift register, I'm going to take load from low to high. When I go high, the data and address are latched into the registers. Then I'll go low again and repeat the process for the following data and clock setup. Moving further down the spec sheet, let's come here and look at this. Now this is a little confusing when you look at it. Just remember that you're going to be shifting in bit D15 first and it's going to be moving in from this direction. So after 16 iterations of bit clock, this is what it will be. Don't let this confuse you from what you saw in this drawing here. The data is shifted in through D0. Alright, here is our 16 registers that exist in the 7219. And the addresses are as follows. 0x0 zero zero, zero is no op. It does nothing. The most imp the important ones for our purposes, the digits, that is um, digit 0 through 7, are at, are at addresses 0, 1 through 0, 8. In other words, if I write the code for the far right digit in the display, it's going to be in register 0x01, and the one on the far left, digit 8, is going to be in register 0x08. Our next register, 0x09, sets the decode mode. It decides if it's going to be the dot matrix mode or the BCD display mode. Register 0x0a sets our intensity. 0x0b sets our uh, scan limit. That lets us choose the number of digits to operate from. 0x0c, you can turn it on and off. And 0x0f is a display test. It just lights up all the decimal points in the segments. There is no 0 uh, X zero D. Remember again, register zero X to register zero zero X zero one to zero X zero eight. Select the digits going from right to left. All right, let's look at register hex address zero X zero C. This is your shutdown register. If you write a zero to this register, it's shut down. If you write a one, it's normal operation. So 0x01 is for normal operation. The next register, of course, is 0x09. This is the decode mode register. The one that I use is 0xff written to this register. Which, allow, which turns on the binary coded decimal mode for digits 7 through 0. And you can use no D, if you're going to use this in the graphics or what I call the dot matrix mode, you're going to write 0, 0 to this, and then you can put in your, then there is no decoding for binary coded decimal. The reason they use binary coded decimal in both these kinds of displays and clock chips like the DS1307 is it makes the hardware some more efficient and easier to design. All right, let's take a look at what our BCD code, binary coded decimal, actually does for us at the register level in the device. For a, for a byte, or 8 bits, only D0 through D3 are used. 
and they will represent from 0 to 9. Now you can use um, 10 through 15 to produce other codes such as a dash and E and H, L, P, blank, whatever. D bit D7 turns on the decimal point. So if I need, for instance, now remember, for example, that the decimal point is to the right of the DIT particular displays that's used in this device. If I want two decimal places, then I'm going to have to set the bit D7 in register 2, not register 1 you would have to set D7 in register 2 and then it would be the appropriate input code whatever from D0 to D3. Why do we have to go to uh, give you an idea of what you're dealing with with BCD? Let's look at the following. Here is a BCD representation of the integer number 162. If you're using a regular byte, that consists of 8 bits, and that should be 0 to 255 that you can have in 8 bits. But BCD uses 4 bits for each digit. So here would be a 2, a 6, and a 1. Quite a bit different. I'll discuss how to convert from integers, such as you see here, to um, BCD code. Alright, here is register 0x0b. This is um, where I set the number of digits that I want to operate. 0x through 07 selects the number of digits displayed. So if I'm only going to use say four of the digits and leave the other four turned off, then I would enter uh, I would store in this register 0x03 hexadecimal. Now remember, digit 0 starts at register 0x01. Don't forget that. In this case, I stored a 0x07 in this particular register to utilize all eight digits. All right. Down the spec sheet, you can look up how much current your various segments are going to use. If you're using, uh, say, three digits and you're turning on the appropriate segment, it's going to use 30 milliamps, basically about 10 milliamps per segment. And there's seven segments plus a decimal point on each digit. Do the math. Finally, we come to this register 0x0f. This is the register that you will either turn it on, which is called, you can use, uh, on, you can turn it on, normal operation, it's going to be zero. But if you want to go into test mode, you're going to put uh, 0x01 and it just lights up all the segments. Let's see if there's anything else of interest further down. Nope, that's it. For the spec sheet. Alright, let's take a brief look at the Arduino code to set up the MAC 7219. In this case, I've defined uh, CS as 5, data bit is 4, and clock as 6. That's my three connections plus ground and VCC. All three are going to be pins are going to be programmed as outputs. And this is in setup. When I come to setup, I have a routine called initiate max 7219. Instead of stringing out all that stuff here, I made a separate subroutine to initialize the device. My first uh, subroutine is just called pulse cs it will go, it will send CS high and then it will go low to latch the data into the device. Prior to that, I'm going to load data through a subroutine called WriteMax7219. 
all it's going to do, and I'm going to send in the address and data, it's going to check you it's going to check to make sure that the address is in the range of 1 to 8. If not, it will immediately return and do nothing. Then it will call SSR out, that's serial shift register out routine that I'll cover in another video, sends out the address and then SSR out data. Then it's going to pulse CS to latch the data into the appropriate register. Right. This is the uh, subroutine initiate max 7219. The first thing I'm going to do is assure that CS is low so that data can be written in. First I'm going to send out register address 0x09. This sets up the decode mode and then I'm going to send out data 0xff. This will give me 4-bit BCD code for all 8 digits. It clocks CS register set. The next I will set intensity, that is in register 0x0a. I'm going to, uh, my data is going to be 0x03, gives me approximately 730 seconds. Pulse CS, register set. Moving on down. Next I want to set the scan limit, that's at address 0x0b and I'm going to use 0x07 so I can use all eight digits pulse CS. Now just to make sure this one this probably is not needed but I do it as a precaution if I have to reinitiate the device under power up or under a power up reset. All right. What I'm going to do is reg is one through eight. I'm just going to register. I'm going to send out at the appropriate address zero x zero f. That will assure that the associated digit is turned completely off. Pulse C S again. Finally, I'm going to set this for normal operation. I'm going to go to address 0x0c and I'm going to send out 1. That turns the device on I, and then I pulse CS. I could make a separate little subroutine that would send out um, instead of 0x01 I could always send out 0x00 and shut the device off. You might want to do that to save power and so forth when the Arduino or whatever control circuit doesn't need it at the time, you might just want to shut it down to save the power. That's how you set up the Max 7219. Hope this was useful. Check out the other videos in this series and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.